Hello everyone! I have been thinking of doing an author pros tier list for quite a while because it's just... I feel like I should have it there. I don't know. It's just one I meant to do. And then I saw this and I actually just like this a little bit more than the tier list for pros. It has some kind of evaluation that isn't just qualitative. Now I have to mention for these authors, this is not every author I've read. Um, I, I skipped some who I'd only read like one or two books by and I just uh, didn't feel like I had a strong enough opinion on um, or enough to go off of or just didn't really remember what my opinion was. Um, and also, I am not going to be taking authors average throughout their career. You do not get punished for publishing books or than some other authors. Um, so this is going to be me considering them like... Not when they're at their best, like, on a line basis. Like, not their best page, but, like, their books where they were at their best with their prose. You know, authors, once they've really hit the prime of their career. And also, it's rather obvious, I have not read every book by all of these authors. In fact, I have not read every book by most of these authors. I've probably read... If you were to look at all the books combined that all these authors read, I've probably read 25% of them. I don't know. I just made up a number... I've read a lot of books from a lot of these authors, but there's also, most of these authors have books I haven't read. So obviously I'm going to mention kind of the books that I'm thinking like of the prime of their career that I've read as I go through it. And also you'll notice this isn't a tier list. This is Canva, which is basically the, um, which is basically Photoshop for dummies. <laughs> um, Photoshop for dummies who don't want to pay for Photoshop. Um, and that's what I have here because uh, I there couldn't find like an automatic template for this. Um, it's going to be pretty simple. You want to, whether you're uh, left or right isn't, doesn't actually matter. Like right is not, the top right is not better than top left, but you want to be as high as you can. Um, you're going to probably know most, probably 80% of authors are going to be like in this range. Cause I just think not many people get published if their prose is like straight up bad. Like how often do I actually read a book and go like the prose of this book is bad. Also, uh, the good or bad will obviously my opinion. Um, I'm going to... So, for prose, it is one of those where sometimes, like, I read something and I'm like, ah, the prose of that was, like, it was good, but I didn't work for me. I'm going to hedge that a little bit and be like, okay, no, it's still at least good. So, there's probably going to be very few people in, like, bad, but um, it'll be degrees of good. Anyway, we are going to start up here. Uh, for those who don't know, this is Susanna Clark who I have read exactly one book by. We have to make people people smaller. And actually, minimizing uh, Susanna Clark puts her pretty close to where I'd put her. Um, I have only read Piranesi. I will read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell at some point. Um, and the prose of Piranesi is phenomenal. Like, really, 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 really good. And it's not particularly complex either. I would put it definitely simpler than most and like, Really high on the good. Also, we're probably going to go up here for the highest one. We're not going to, like, stop at the line. But I'm going to put Susanna Clark, like, really high up on the good tier. Um, and sim relatively simple, uh, for Piranesi at least, but um, just generally amazing. Uh, and next we have Evan Winter, who uh, only has two books. And I absolutely love books. And I think I have to be, not be, be a little bit unbiased here, because I love both Evan Winter books. But I think that's primarily because of story. Um, I definitely don't think his prose is bad. Actually, I think it's pretty good, but I think it's definitely going to be with the pack and it's pretty simple. It'd probably be like here ish. Um, we'll put it like here. I think Evan, I think he's good prose. Um, but it's definitely, it's not the main appeal. Um, and we have another person who I only, but I have two people on here who I've only read one book by. But that's just cause the writings, they're here cause their writing is really good. And then next we have Peter Beagle. So the question is, is the prose better in The Last Unicorn or Piranesi? Jeez. That, I think about Tied. I think Beagle's prose is slightly more complicated, um, but not necessarily way more complicated. It's probably slightly more complicated than average, just like word choice wise. Um, actually, complicated is like sentence structure, word choice, density, uh, vocabulary level. Um, so I think I'm going to put him at the same level of good, um, in slightly more complex than average, 
Uh, and next, this is Andy Weir, who I think has very simple prose. I definitely don't think the prose is the appeal of his writing. He might even be... He might be some of the simplest prose on the entire list. Like, he might actually be the most straightforward. I mean, The Martian is basically, like recounting things that happened um project hail mary is maybe a little bit like more complex but probably one of the most straightforward writers on the entire list um we're gonna put him like all the way out here uh and next we have tad williams who's a uh, somewhat pretty verbose um he's gonna be the most complex on here now tad williams is someone's prose who's not quite my favorite like i i i just can't like, I know I did, I would try and separate, I don't, I'm going to cancel what I said before. It, based on my experience with the pros, I'm not going to be like, but other people like his pros more. I definitely like the pros of Susanna Clark and Peter S. Beagle more, and it's not super close, but Tad's prose is definitely good. Like, it's a big appeal to the story, and he's definitely more complex than most. Like, he's a pretty sophisticated vocabulary, relatively long sentences. Um, we're going to put him, like, halfway to complex and decently far up for good uh and next we have brent weeks um who i think among the authors i've read probably has one of the weaker voices um like when compared to there's some more famous authors known for like simple prose who sometimes their prose is criticized and i think his is worse than that it's a little bit clunkier um i should say for by the way for, i have forgot to say uh, for Andy Weir, I've read Project Hail Mary and The Martian. For Evan Winter, I've read Everything. And for Tad Williams, I've only read Memory Sorrow and Thorn. For Brent Weeks, I have read all of Lightbringer and not Night Angel. Um, he's not bad prose. I'm going to put him on the line, and I think he is simpler prose than ev like almost everyone here except Andy Weir. Uh, next, we have Dan Simmons, of which I have only read two books, which is Hyperion and The Fall of Hyperion. Um, and him, he's going to probably be pretty close to Tad Williams. Um, I mean, I think his writing is really good. He's able to, like, change his writing so much for the various point of views, which I think is a point in favor of being complex and good. I think if you asked me, gun to my head, like, which prose I prefer, the prose in Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, or Hyperion, I think I'd probably take Hyperion just slightly, and I think it's also a little bit more complex. So I'm going to put him, like, there. Uh, and next we have J.R.R. Tolkien, the author of The Lord of the Rings, who is, uh, we're gonna put up like, right up near the top, uh, reread Lord of the Rings, and I think his writing is just immaculate. There is a reason it has been timeless. It just has such gravitas to it, such epicness, like he just makes things hit harder than they should. He knows when to keep the word choice simple and complex. He varies the vocabulary used depending on what section of the book it is because the actual Lord of the Rings is supposed to be like an in-world text that would actually have various writers. Um, so he's going to be um, like way, way up here. I think these people have slightly more like complex prose, um, but we're going to put Tolkien right near the top for quality, like just all the way up there. Uh, and next we have Brandon Sanderson. I'm sure people are wondering where I'm going to put Brandon Sanderson. And I am also wondering where I'm going to put Brandon Sanderson. So I would like to keep in mind that this is all the authors at their best. So for Tolkien, I've read The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, so for Brandon, this is like Tress, Emperor, Soul, Stormlight, Brandon. Elantris Brandon would probably be like around where Brent Weeks is probably. Um... I think Elantris has quite a bit worse writing, though. I think Emperor's Soul, like, Tress, Stormlight Brandon, like, I think it's good. I think it's solidly good. It would have to be lower than Tad and Dan Simmons, um, just because I think even... It's just, it's, it serves... So what I'm defining as good, because obviously sometimes people use this complex and simple, does it do accomplish what it's trying to do um, in the way it's trying to do it? And I just think Brandon's does super successfully. Um, I think uh, he's probably, in terms of complexity, in between Evan Winter and Brent Weeks. And we're going to have him above Evan Winter and below Tad and Dan Simmons. Um, there definitely, okay, there definitely is a trend here. I uh, But, I mean, there's uh, 
probably Susanna Clarke actually is one of the best, like, more simple writers that I've read in terms of, like, prose for uh, Piranesi. That was, it was just so smooth. Next we get Pat Rothfuss. Um, I'm sure many people would put him, like, uh, I mean, one of the main reason, like, if you go to someone whose favorite series is King Killer, they're probably going to have him, like, off the chart. I really like the writing in King Killer. I think it's my favorite part of King Killer. It's very readable. It's very addictive. I think I would definitely have it more on the Dan Simmons, Tad Williams tier, maybe slightly higher and not quite on the Piranesi, Peter Beagle tier. And I'm, I'm sure no one's going to get mad at me for the opinions of this video, and I'm sure this will all go over well. But you know what? Pat Rothfuss would also have Pat Rothfuss below Peter Beagle, so deal with it. And I don't think it's sim super complex, but I think it's he is more complex prose than everyone below him. Um, so I'm going to put him, like, here. Which brings us to Christopher Rocchio, who is one of my favorite authors, and a large reason behind that is the prose. I find his prose extremely readable and smooth. Like, he is, for, for my brain, he is some of the best scene setting that I've ever read. He has a lot of incredibly unique settings, and I can picture them all extremely well. Um, I almost never have to read a sentence multiple times, like, to see what's going on. And yet, I also probably, like, if I had an e-reader or was highlighting passages I really liked, he would be one of the most highlighted authors for me. Um, I'm gonna have him... I don't think he's... He's probably pretty similar in terms of complexity and goodness to Peter Beagle for me. I'm gonna say slightly more for both, though. I'm gonna put him, like, here. Accidentally covering up Peter Beagle. Okay, so you can still see Peter Beagle, because... I have Rocky a little slightly higher, so you can still see them. He's actually he's one of my favorite prose writers. I'm going to put him really high. He'd probably be like, eh. He's probably like going to be the third or fourth highest on this entire list. Um, and next we have George R. R. Martin, uh, an author I need, I need to reread, because the last time I read a song, I was going to reread a song of Ice and Fire this year and join the read along, but I just. Is it all good? Like such, like the average I feel like is so high right now, but it's, it's gonna go down. Um, I guess I don't have that many authors. Anyway, George R. R. Martin, like in the past, I've struggled with his writing style, but it's probably because when I last read it, like it just wasn't my preferred writing style. But I just think in terms of my enjoyment, I probably will have to move this up later. But I'm gonna put him like, eh, what's up, George? Um, for where did Evan Winter go? I accidentally deleted Evan Winter at some point. All right, Evan Winter, get back here. Eh, you were like here. Uh, that's not where George is going, by the way. So George, I think probably in terms of complexity is pretty similar to Pat Rothfuss. Maybe more. He does have like his own vocabulary for his word for some degrees. He does have a lot of adjectives, in, uh, especially in uh, Game of Thrones. Um, so I'm going to put him like, I still think his writing is very good. Like, so probably in terms of enjoyment, like, the last time I read it, he'd be down here. Like, I didn't get along, I haven't gotten along with his writing style super well, I just that found it slightly exhausting to read, but, like, the type of writing I like has changed a lot since I last read it. So I think if I reread it, it would probably be up here. So I'm gonna kind of do a weird thing where I average it out and put it, like, here. Yeah. Um... Next we have Ken Liu, and this would be George Martin in like, you know, I mean, I've only read five George Martin books, and I don't think the prose quality varies massively. Um, I mean, I think he has improved as a line-by-line -line writer by Dance with Dragons, but I think like, you know, A Game of Thrones George and Storm of Swords George and Dance with Dragons George are all pretty close to each other. Like, they're a lot closer to each other than like Elantris and Emperor Soul Brandon, um, for example. Uh, okay, next we have Ken Liu, which I think... This, so this would be like Speaking Bones, Ken Liu, whose writing I found to be exquisite. Um, whose everything I found to be exquisite. Um, in terms of my enjoyment, he'd probably be just like similarly complex to maybe slight like here. Um, did I just not bring writers who I don't like? What's going on here? Feel like I should have had more writers I don't like. Whatever. Um, I'm putting Ken Lee really high. I mean, he's one of my favorite authors, and I think his writing 
just works for me so well. Um, and next we have Scott Lynch, who I think whose technical writing, again, I've read three Scott Lynch books, um, Lies of Lock Lamora, uh, Red Seas Over Red Skies, and Republic of Thieves. And I think Republic of Thieves, from a line-by-line -line pro standpoint, was his best. But again, I think like the difference between it and Lies was not huge. Um, so Scott Lynch, I think we're going to put like... His writing's pretty good. Man, you know what? I'm just... In in all honesty, I just have to be completely honest. I'm, I put Brandon here because I don't want to get yelled at. Because people are like, ah, his prose. Fuck, he's like my second favorite author. It's like here for me. No, like there. I love Brandon's writing. Okay, Scott Lynch. Um, people are probably going to yell at me for putting Brandon too high. But you know what? Deal with it. I just reread Lord of, Words of Radiance for the eighth time. And you know what? It slapped. It was incredible. Um, Scott Lynch, I'm going to put, I think in terms of complexity, similar to Susanna Clark. Um, I just really like the way he communicates things sometimes. Like, I don't know. It just works. Um, I, I do find his like physical, like scene setting doesn't work particularly well for me, but like if dialogue counts in this, then that moves him up. And I think like his internal monologues are fantastic. Um, next we have Fonda Lee who I think is definitely, probably in terms of complexity, like, in between the people over here. Okay, I do. Okay, okay. okay. No, Fondalee is not down there. Um, Fondalee is not here. Um, in terms of complexity, it's probably pretty close to the middle. Um, and I think in terms of good... I, I think she's a very good execution of, like, uh, a not very, like, complex writing style. Like, I think her writing was almost never clunky. I would probably have it uh, probably slightly below Scott Lynch. And next we have Ursula K. Le Guin, um, who I've read the entire Ur of Earth Sea by, and I haven't read any of her her, uh, her sci-fi. Um, her prose is obviously very good. Um, I think for my drawing, I would probably have it with like these people. Um, I think it's more, it's about as complex. We're going to put it in about here. Um, and now we have Mark Lawrence, who, unfortunately for Mark Lawrence, we are going by my enjoyment. Because um, I actually think Mark Lawrence is a good writer. I just cannot picture a single thing he writes. And I, I like, I have to reread sentences. Um, I actually, like, I think it's probably more complex than a bunch of these people in the way, like, he tries to describe things. And it just doesn't work for me very well. So he's probably going to be, like, here for me. Um... I actually really like Mark Lawrence. Um, like, I, I think his good read reviews are fantastic. I think SPFO was fantastic. I just, like, the writing of Book of the Ancestor didn't work for me. I did not find the writing style particularly enjoyable to read. Sorry, Mark. Um, you're going, like... I actually think his writing is, like, pretty complex. I'm putting it, like, here. Um, okay, now we have Josiah Bancroft, um, who whose writing, I think is that it's most complex in the fall of Babel, but I actually, I thought it was at its best in the Hod King slightly. There were a couple descriptions in fall of Babel where I found I couldn't picture as well. It was partially because the setting was so weird. So I was actually like, couldn't tell if something was em a metaphor or not. Like a random example is I remember him describing like as emerald grass. And I wasn't sure if it was just like really green grass or literally people had emeralds where most people would have grass. And there were a few examples with that that I think took away clarity. So this is Hod King, um, Josiah Bancroft, who I think in terms of complexity is like here and in terms of quality is like right up with the Ursula K. Le Guin, Pat Rothfuss, Ken Liu, probably slightly below like Susanna Clark. Um, I mean, I think the writing is a huge appeal to Senlin Ascends and it's one of the reasons why I really enjoyed that series. Um, and next we have Jim Butcher, who Jim Butcher is probably the person most helped by me at not averaging people over their entire career. If Stormfront Jim Butcher counted just as much as Battleground Jim Butcher, he'd probably be like here. Um, but it doesn't. So this is like Skin Game, Battleground, Cold Days late Jim Butcher. And I think late Jim Butcher is phenomenal. 
in terms of writing. Like, I actually think Battleground, from a prose standpoint, stood out from the other books um, in terms of clarity, in terms of wit, in terms of just sheer epicness. Um, and it's probably, in terms of authors whose prose would be categorized as simple, um, who actually probably, in hindsight, Evan Winter and Brandon should move this way. And we'll move you that way and you that way. Um, and Jim Butcher should be, like, there. Um, okay. Next, we have Glenn Cook. Uh, whose writing is kind of weird to describe. It's very terse. Uh, like, it's very short sentences a lot of the times. But I actually think in some ways it's also, like, very information-dense and complex. Um, I really like it. Um, I think I'm going to have him, like, as a, a solid, like, there. Yeah. Um, and now we have John Gwynn. And this is an interesting one because this would be Shadow of the Gods and Hunger of the Gods. Uh, Hunger of the Gods, John Gwynn. I think in terms of... So I actually like Faithful of the Fallen more than I like the Bloodsworn Saga. But that's because of other factors. In terms of just, like, prose, I actually think the prose in, like, Bloodsworn is is pretty darn good. Um, like, this is another person who, like... I, I thought Malice prose at times was a bit clunky. But Bloodsworn Saga prose is, like, solidly good. It's probably kind of similar to, like, Fonda Lee in terms of both quality and complexity. It's actually probably, I think I like Fonda Lee's prose a little bit more, but I think John Gwynn's for Bloodsworn is slightly more complex. Which feels weird to have John Gwynn as less complex than Susanna Clark, but I actually think the writing in Piranesi is pretty simple. It's just brilliant. Um, and brilliant obvious, um, like often gets associated with complex. Uh, and next we have Terry Goodkind. Um, I don't know why I included him in here. Um, I've only read Wizard's First Rule, which is his first book. There's a chance his prose improves. Um, in Wizard's First Rule, yeah, I thought it was simple and bad. Um, it's incredibly redundant. Uh, redundant in terms of, like, communicating information, in terms of void choice. It actually ruined the word friend for me. There's a lot of, like, heartfelt moments in books I've read since Wizard's First Rule where people are like, it's simple, like, you're my first, or something like that. But because for the first third of Wizard's First Rule, everyone was just constantly like, this is my friend. This person's my friend. It's like, who are these? This is my friend, Zed. And my friend, whatever the girl's name was. I forget. Um, yeah. Drove me insane. And it's it's going in bad, bad simple. Um, it's actually probably more complicated than some. Or we're putting it like here. Um, and next we have my favorite author of all time. Robin Hobb, also known as Megan Lindholm, um, who is going right to the top of good um, as my second favorite, barely, um, one of my, in contention for my favorite prose authors, she is going to go basically off the screen. I think in terms of simplicity, I'm actually going to have her write, like, I think more complex than average, but there's definitely a lot of more complex authors. Like, Someone, there's also just a lot more complex proses who I don't read. I get, although I guess I'm not applying that to sim, to simple because Andy Weir is here when I guess it would be kids books. But there's people like James Joyce who would be like out here and complex. Um, but Robin Hobb, I think, is not super difficult to read. Probably about in the middle in terms of like complexity. It's just so smooth and the word choice is so perfect and it's so evocative in so many ways and I love it. And next we also have Steven Erickson. Um, and I think Steven Erickson is helped by this is not averaging out because this is Toll the Hound Steven Erickson. And Toll the Hound Steven Erickson hits different. Um, Toll the Hound Steven Erickson is going to be like below Tolkien, but is going to be like probably, probably in terms of density and complexity, he would be the highest person on this list so far. Am I missing someone? I'm missing someone here. There's supposed to be more people here. One second. Um, I'm missing Gene Wolfe. Gene Wolfe is supposed to be here. We're going to pause at the end of this and find the people who I'm missing and add them to it. But Erickson, I think, is going to be right near the top for good uh, for Toll the Hounds. Toll the Hounds just hits different um, and is going to be the highest so far in terms of complexity. And now we have Robert Jordan. Um... 
Robert Jordan. It's very descriptive. For some people, over-descriptive. I actually find his descriptions work quite well for me. Um, I think it would be like, for prose, kind of middle of the pack in terms of complexity while being pretty good. Um, we're going to put it here. I'm going to move George up. Um, okay, we're going to put Robert Jordan right there. Um, and now we have R.F. Kuang. Now, I have not read Babel. I have only read the Poppy War Trilogy. And I think R.F. Kuang's uh, prose in the Poppy War Trilogy is kind of out of the way. Um, it's supposed to be, it's like very straightforward. I think it's probably pretty similar to the people out there. I think it's a little bit, I'd put it like here. Uh, for the Poppy War Trilogy. Uh, and next we have N.K. Jemison. Um, I have only read the Broken Earth Trilogy, and her writing in the Broken Earth Trilogy is, is excellent. She has such a strong, authorial voice, and it's just like a very kind of, you can sense the wit coming through from the authorial voice. I think it's more complex than most of the people here. I'd probably have it like, uh, we're going to move this back so it doesn't cover, cover poor George there. Um... I'm sure there's going to be lots of fans of, like, these people who are going to be really upset that I have Brandon higher than them. But you know what? Make your own version. He's my second favorite author. I can put him where I want. Um, okay. And near last, we have Guy Gavril K, who is going nearly off the charts. He is, of course, as I have often said. And keep in mind, this is not only Guy Gavril K. This is, like, Lord of Emperors, brightness long ago, Guy Gavril K. And he's going, probably in terms of complexity, similar to Tad. Um, ah, no, I think it's higher. So he doesn't use a lot of adjectives. He does pr have a somewhat, like, high-level vocabulary. But actually, no, we're going to put him higher for complexity. I think, like, it's more the sentence structure for Guy Gavril K. It can be pretty ridiculous. Like, the way he can just insert little bits into sentences where he can have, like, compound sentences where it's like the equivalent of like an m dash and then you have something in brackets and then you have a comma but like it just works like it's very like varied complex sentence structure while being able to incorporate made up words to describe things that don't exist along with real words with a pretty high level vocabulary in a way that's just incredibly smooth um so we're gonna have him like okay i guess we shouldn't have people literally off the chart so we'll move Hob down. So like, no, I'm. You know, we're just putting people off the chart. So Guy Gavril K is going essentially off the chart. You can only barely see him um, all the way up on good. And next we have Brian Lee Durfee. Not last because there's people I missed who I'm going to add. Um, but I think Brian Lee Durfee's writing is really good. Um, it's again pretty descriptive. Um, also, I want to mention for Guy Gavril K, he's my favorite for scene setting and one of my favorite for internal monologue as well. I think he's a scene setting sniper where he can use the minimum amount of words possible to paint an incredibly vivid picture. Anyway, Brian Lee Durfee also is pretty verbose and pretty complex uh, and is also quite good. I'm going to put him like there. Brian would be mad at me if I put him higher than Tad, so I'm going to leave him there. And now we're going to pause and I'm going to add some people I missed. Okay. It's time to continue. We have a couple more people who were forgotten before. Um, and the first person we have here is Gene Wolfe, um, who actually technically doesn't use any made-up words. All his words are are not made up. They are, they are words that exist in the English language, despite his setting being millions of years in the future. For those who don't know, the only Gene Wolfe I've read is Book of the New Sun. Um, and yet... It really reads like they're made up words. Be, um, and also with the amount of information he hides in plain sight, we are putting him about on like the Erickson tier um, of good. And we are putting him as a, as the most complex of, of anyone here. There are obviously authors that exist who would be more complex than this if I read them. But on the scale of what I read um, and in terms of complexity, he gets... The number one spot. Uh, next we have Neil Gaiman, who I have read exactly two books by. I have read American Gods and Neverwhere. 
um, and I gave both kind of three to four stars. I didn't think either were like amazing, but I liked both enough. And for both, probably the prose was my favorite part. I actually quite like his writing style. Um, it actually stylistically wise reminds me a little bit of Guy Gavril K, but I think I, I mean, I like Guy Gavril K's writing more. Um, and I think it doesn't quite have either the complexity or quality. Um, I think right, uh, probably like in this area of like solidly good, moderately complex. All right. One day I won't be in a reading slump or there will be a Winds of Winter uh, release date and I will move George R. R. Martin up because uh, probably on reread he's going up but for now he's, he's staying there um, and next we have Robert Jackson Bennett um, who I've read one and a half books by um, and I think his prose definitely isn't bad it's very simple it's probably actually even simpler than Brent Weeks and maybe slightly worse um, so for the simple like I'm okay with so, but for me, if you have simple writing and you still get like strong emotional reactions out of introspective scenes, that tells me you're doing something right. When those just fail to land and feel a bit clunky, I think the prose has something to do with that. And I'm going to put Robert Jackson Bennett in this bottom left here. Now we have Pierce Brown. I would like to note, I have not read Iron Gold or Dark Age. I've only read the main Red Rising trilogy. Um, and I would describe his prose. So this is like Morningstar, because I think each book, technically writing-wise, has a noticeable bump in improvement, and I would put him, like, here. Probably about as complex as these people, but I, I think, like, I definitely like their writing more. Um, it's almost at times, like, too dramatic. It might, now granted, I've only read things in Darrow's voice, and I just don't like Darrow that much. So maybe when I read things in non Darrow's voice and he, he continues to improve, he'll, he'll move up the list. Next, we have Frank Herbert, second last person on here. He is going to be hard to place. On one hand, he manages to do the constant POV hoppy uh, third person omniscient really effectively. And I feel like that is a factor of complexity and quality. Um, but on the other hand, I think prose would probably be like, ignore those. Um, probably in terms of like what makes Dune good, probably prose is one of the lower things, but I think it's definitely pretty good and like moderately complex. Um, we're going to put it like with the Fonda Lees and the Scott Lynch's and the, uh, John Gwynn's of the world. Um, but a little bit higher than them and we're going to move it back. Um, okay. And I think that leaves one person. Mr. Joe Abercrombie. Um, now, Joe Abercrombie, he does not write flowery. I don't know if he writes passages I would describe as beautiful, but that's because he's usually trying to describe very unbeautiful things. And say one thing for Joe Abercrombie's vo uh, prose, it's vivid. Um, it, it describes things just extremely vividly. You really... I think it's one of the reasons he, he gets credit for writing realistic fantasy. Um, in fact, he does not write realistic fantasy. His battles are not more realistic than the average fantasy battles. His action scenes are not more realistic in terms of how things actually work. Um, and many things like they just, they aren't more realistic because, you know, I don't, a lot of authors do research. Authors are not omniscient. When you're trying to create a world, things are going to be unrealistic. But I think the fact that he has that label as writing realistic fantasy does not come down to it actually being more realistic. It's his ability to write things that feel realistic, which I think largely comes down as his ability of like prose. So I think I'm going to put him higher than... I'm going to put him like here in terms of prose. I think his prose is really good. Um, I think it's really good at what it's trying to do, especially like in Age of Madness. And I think the fact that he so often gets the reputation of writing realistic fantasy actually is a huge credit. Oh, and also actually one of the things he's the best at is character voices, which is also an element of prose. We're going to move him up. We're going to put him like there. Yeah, we're going to put him like here. Um, I think his prose is, for that reason, like, it's just, it's so effective as doing what it wanted to. All right. Here is my list that I'm sure will not make anyone 
angry with me. Uh, this was kind of annoying to set up. I'm, I'm normally like for tier lists, I can just be like, put it in the link and be like, go do it yourself. I would like to see more people do this. I'd be very curious to see people's chart. Um, presumably the complex simple is somewhat objective. Um, I think pr it would be hard to quantify, but I think it would be possible. I mean, there's like the reading level element. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this tracks if I plugged all the, like one, the books that I'm thinking of for each person into like a reading level guide. It'd be interesting how it tracks like my intuition for simplicity versus complexity compared to what that says. Um, I think this is roughly similar to that. Although I think there are some techniques that add complexity to the pro to someone's prose. Uh, while not adding to the difficulty. Um, so I don't think it would work completely. Um, but I, it would be interesting to see. So I, I would guess probably if more people did this on the complex simple scale, I think most people will relatively agree with me. And then I imagine if more people do this on the good or bad scale, um, there will be less agreement. Main one is I very rarely dislike a book because of the prose. Usually, like, I have to really dislike a writing style for it to make me, like, actively be like, the writing is, I dislike it, it's bad. Or those don't mean the same thing. I dislike it. Um, so I probably have way less people for prose in bad. If you were, if I were to do this for, like, character work or something, um, or, like, plotting or plot twists or world building, or, uh, like, internal consistency, I am, I would have way more people in the bad section, um, compared to prose, I, I think I'm, I'm mostly, like, this kind of represents how I feel, where most people are in, like, a pack for me of pretty good, but it doesn't necessarily hinder or, like, massively aid my enjoyment of their novels that much, with a couple, like, real outliers who, like, I would say everyone like in the Susanna, like Susanna Clark, Josiah Bancroft, Peter Beagle, Christopher Rocchio, Stephen Erickson, Tola Hound, Stephen Erickson, uh, Glenn, uh, Gene Wolfe, Tolkien, Hobb, and Guy Gavril Kay, like their writing significantly increased my enjoyment of their novels um, and the people slightly below it as well. Yes, that includes Brandon. Um, with most people just being like, me being like, that's pretty good. And then a couple people were, oh, no, you know what, Brand, we're going to move Evan Winter up. Uh, in terms of good. I had him too low. We're going to put him to like here. Um, I don't think it's his biggest strength. This was like a pacing. He'd be like off the charts, but we're moving him up. Um, let's see if there's any other changes I want to make. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with it. George is the hardest person for me to put on here because if it's in terms of like my enjoyment when I first read it, um, it would be down here. If it's in terms of like where I expect I'll put him after another reread, it'd be like up here. But we're going to kind of average those out in some kind of weird way. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, let me know what you think. Do you want me to do this? I'd have to change the simple com and complex to other things for other factors. I think for most things, a tier list just works better. But when you want me to do more specific skill tier lists, uh, did, I, did I make you want to yell at the screen for any of these placements? Let me know in the comments down below. Have a nice day, everyone.